Afternoon folks, I hope you are well. It's a uh, rainy, what's today, Monday, Tuesday? Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. And uh, I have with me my latest LCS skipper pipe. Really, really nice pipe. It's really seen some good use, just beautiful grain. And as I mentioned in the original video, this one has a triple step, two out of sterling silver, and the briar being the shank itself. The previous skippers that I've done have been two steps. I brought with me my tin of 2016, uh, only golden sliced, and this will be bowl number 32. Hopefully, I'm trying to see if I can get to 40 bowls. Uh, which even if I do, in reality it's less because a lot of the bowls that I've had are around maybe a half or two thirds full. see all the dots that I've put on the top there each one represents one ball now I've got my newest lighter which my daughter my little eight-year-old daughter bought me for my birthday and um, I've changed the insert the insert was a regular and I've changed it for a, a pipe it's a straight away I have not put in a filter I brought them with me He's actually, um, it's not a Zippo, the insert is, but this is the, the Star make. They do like a replica kind of Zippo. I first became aware of the brand, the Star brand, when um, I first bought my first ever Zippo, I think it was the, um, the Jack Daniels one. And it was before I really had gotten to grips with the idea of um, learning how to use a Zippo. You know, letting it burn off a little bit of that, uh, a little bit of that fuel flavor, that petrol flavor. It's very much in the early days, and uh, so I was on the lookout for something that could. I wanted to use a Zippo, but I didn't want to use the fuel, the petrol. So I was looking for some way of converting that to butane, and then I came across. In those days, uh, it was on eBay. I hardly use eBay nowadays, but nowadays everything's on Amazon. But um, in those days, I was an avid eBay user. And I came across that star, star brand where you could buy a butane insert for the Zippo lighters. It had like a push button. No, actually, it was a turning wheel as well. It was a flint, a flint operated one. And it had a, a flame size regulator on the base of the insert. But I found them to be extremely unreliable. You couldn't rely on the flame. Sometimes it was tiny, sometimes it was large. Um, and after a while I just gave up. Then I went over to regular butane lighters. 
think I, at that stage I bought the, the Peterson Old Boy style. Um, I had some issues with that. I think I, I went through a couple of them which I had to send back under guarantee. And I had no problems returning them. I got them from GQ Tobaccos and uh, GQ Tobaccos, you know, fantastic customer service. It took them no questions asked and replaced. I think I'm on my third one now. But I've had that now for a few years without any issue. Um, I basically, I don't use it outside. I don't take it with me. I don't put it in my pocket. It's just literally, um, I have it on my desk or on my uh, pipe rack. I use it intermittently. I must be honest that nowadays I use matches and, um, and the big stove lighters, you know, the ones with a little extension on, on the uh, flame thing. And um, in fact, in my recent uh, package that I got from a very, 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 very generous person for my birthday, he sent me four of those as well. And I'm only using this lighter because this one was bought by my daughter, so um, I just want to use it. So, but they're very, very good. The other big lighters. So, um, actually, I uh, I opened up that package during London Calling on Saturday night. If you're interested in seeing what he sent me, he sent me an awesome package. Just really. It's got to be the biggest package I've ever had, I think. Just ridiculous generosity. Um, he sent me a beautiful wooden ashtray, um, a full box of uh, Oliva Siri V Anniversario 135, I guess that's the 135th anniversary of Oliva, with a Vitola that I've never seen before. So it's broad at the top and narrow at the bottom. It's like a reverse um, perfecto or something. It's not even that. It's just like a rounded top, which is broad, probably a 54 ring gauge. And down at the bottom, it tapers down to something like a, uh, I don't know, maybe a 44 ring gauge at the bottom. A very, very interesting cigar, cigar. And it's presented in a beautiful box as well. Um, what else? He sent me the Castello book. The recently issued Castello book in the last, it was issued in the last few years, but it's actually signed by, I think it's Franco Coppo, who currently runs the company, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which I don't know how he got that with the signature on it. Um, but uh, that's something special. As I say, I don't know how he got that. Um, but that's awesome. I will treasure that. Um, I actually have a copy of the book, but certainly not a signed one. So maybe I'll uh, I'll um, send the other one on to somebody else, or I'll sell that maybe. I think they're out of print now. So really awesome to get one signed. He sent me a Zippo, and he sent me Zippos before, so he sent me another one, but this time with the uh, a depiction of the moon landing in 1969, 1969 being my birth year, so again, very thoughtful, a very generous gift. He sent me a bunch of cigars, additional sort of pack of cigars, mostly Camachos. Um, he sent me some pipe tobacco, he sent me some all of gold sliced, of course, and a tin of BU. thoughtful, never mind generous, but a very thoughtful because a lot of it is personalized um, and a lot of it makes a lot of sense. Um, and that person obviously, um, I know him very well, he knows me very well and you know, he knows what I like. So a very, very generous and very thoughtful package. But far too generous, I've told him that, he's, he's, he's nuts, I've told him he's crazy. Oh, and he 
he sent me as well a, a cigar cutter, which in my opinion, one of the best brands of cigar cutter. Um, so that was very nice as well, and I have used that cigar cutter already. So you know who you are, once again, a huge, huge thank you for your generosity. This uh, pipe shape that I'm smoking now, I, um, I've seen the shape before, uh, but I saw it most recently in Rome, when I was there a few weeks ago. It's the Rinaldo Skipper, it's called, and um, in actual fact, the, f the, the shape is actually a little bit counterintuitive. You can see how the taper of the stem goes in, uh, rather than being uh, in line, rather than being in line with the shank. And originally, when I first saw the shape, I thought it was a bit odd, um, but in reality, if you look at it, it's basically the, the shank stem, uh, the shank tapers from being very wide down the step to being narrower, and then it goes from the stem being narrower to being tapered wide in the opposite direction. And then once I got my head around that, it actually makes a lot of sense. And um, the shape, once you kind of, once it grows on you, it's, it's a fantastic shape. It's very well balanced um, in terms of a design. And uh, it clenches very well. And uh, because the shank is quite wide, so the base of the bowl is also quite wide, which means that you get really nice thick walls because the walls taper down from the top. So uh, the majority of the smoke has got a really wide thickness on the bowl. And uh, it just means that you get a really nice cool smoke. And even the first couple of uh, bowls of tobacco that I had in here were usually, or well, not usually, but often, bowl would get quite hot because it's got no because there's no cake in there yet on this one it was just warm to the touch not hot I have put a bit more of a bend on the stem than I would normally usually the the button of the stem would be um, parallel to the top of the bowl so it would be in the same plane the same level if you like not necessarily the same height but on the same plane so that would prevent when you're smoking it that would prevent the smoke from scorching the back the rear side of the bowl um, if that makes any sense um, when we stop driving, I'll show, I'll show you what I mean. Um, but uh, because it's my own pipe, I bent it a little bit more so that I can get uh, a better clench on it. And I can always uh, be careful when I'm smoking it or I can clean it up every so often. It just means it's more comfortable to clench. So uh, a few words about the consignment tobacco sale. Noisy wipers, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so a few words about the tobacco sale. Um, I started the sale, I kind of debated in my mind whether to start it before Passover or not because once Passover starts, it's very intermittent. My access, the days that I work, the days that I've got access to my computer are very intermittent. It's a, an eight day period where some days I can use my computer, some days I can't. And um, as I've explained in, in other videos, but the bottom line is, is that my access is intermittent. And even on the days that I do have access, it's very much a family oriented time. And uh, uh, my house is full. Which is very nice it's beautiful you know obviously feel blessed to have family around uh, so I've got my married kids here my grandkids to stay so it's a very busy family kind of time and um, so I can't dedicate as much time as I would have liked so as I say I so there's been some delay to my responses to emails 
so much so that I decided to put an auto response on my email account just to, to let people know that I've got intermittent access. I didn't want people to think that I'm ignoring emails. I didn't want people to get nervous if they're sent a payment and they weren't getting a response. So I just want to reiterate that, that um, my email access is intermittent at the moment. I'm up to date now. I spent a few hours on it this morning. Um, so I'm up to date now, but any more purchases that come through the day, again, will be intermittent because I've got a very busy day today. I'm on the way uh, to my mum who's in hospital again. Um, so I'll be spending the day there and this evening. Um, hopefully I'll come back at some point this evening. Um, I've got another one of my married kids uh, coming in with their kids. So again, my, my access will be intermittent. So as I say, I debated whether or not to do that first batch just before Passover. And maybe in hindsight, it would have been better that I wouldn't have done it. But what's done is done now. Yeah. Most people are really very understanding. Um, and uh, that's good. The tobaccos aren't going anywhere. The only uh, issue is, is that when people, I mean, it's very, very um, sort of email intensive, if you like, because people are emailing me with inquiries all the time. I'm responding and I'm sending the sort of lists of what's available, what's not available, or sending them a link to the list. And, but in between time, somebody else might inquire. And in order to be fair, um, I've said that I'm going to do it first come, first serve. So, until something is paid for, it's available. So I'm not really holding tobaccos for anybody as such. It's not fair to do that in this kind of sale. So there's a lot of toing and froing and keeping track of everything. So I've got a, a spreadsheet which I've keeping record of everything. But still, it's quite uh, intensive. Just keeping track of everything. But um, hopefully everybody will get what they bought. And uh, I'm looking forward to um, the, the second batch, um, the second batch which I will wait till after Passover to do, and that, barring Saturdays where I won't have access as always, um, I will make sure to respond in a timely fashion, and hopefully it'll be a lot smoother dealing with that second batch. Um, there may be a possible third batch, I'm not sure, we shall see. Um, I haven't There is still quite a significant amount left from the first batch, so I guess that will go on to that second batch, so possibly there'll be three batches. And at some point, I've got to make a start on the pipes as well, but that's not going to happen till after pass over. Um, there's something like uh, 60 or 70 pipes, and that's, you know, I've got to prepare the pipes, I've got to clean them and polish them make them presentable. I mean, a lot of them are unsmoked, so that won't be too difficult. But they still need to be polished up and, you know, make them look their best. So those will be in batches as well, because 60, 70 pipes is, is a lot of work. Um, and those may well go on a new page on the website. Um, I've mentioned this already. I've had a consignment page made for the website. It's not live as yet, but it's waiting ready to go live as soon as I get the pipes on there. Um, so what I'll probably do initially is do, like now, I'll do a video and whatever goes in the video sort of in short order, um, I'll do through the video. And then whatever's left, I'll put up on the consignment page and people can just browse them, look at the pictures, look at the dimensions and buy them whenever they fancy. There's no particular rush there will be, um, the consignment is with me for a few months now, so. But what I would say is if there's a particular tobacco in the next couple of batches, or if there's, when the pipes go on, if there's a particular pipe that you want, don't hang around, because the, the, the stuff that's sought after just sells really quickly. And um, as I said I would do, I priced the stuff as favorably as I could to look after my client, but also to make them accessible 
to buyers. I haven't gone to the top end of the price range, you know, for you know the esotericas and Dunhills and <laughs> any tobaccos which aren't so easy to get anymore. Um, and the current range tobaccos, those are priced at uh, current range prices or below. Um, and they'll have maybe a couple of pounds extra on them if they've got age. But really no silly prices in there. Uh, so that, that was the idea behind it. I didn't want to sort of rip people. Even on the, the Esotericas, the Penzances and the Stonehavens where they could have made a lot more money. But well, I'd say a lot more money, but they could have gone higher, but I decided not to. Um, and I've used um, the pipe studs. Uh, prices as a guide. Uh, they're not precisely following his prices. Um, I've always thought that his prices were very very fair and I've kind of followed the same kind of uh, pricing that he uses roughly. I saw a comment which I think was taken down afterwards by the person made the comment but still the comment came up in my feed one of my videos I was talking about the gun control um, a few weeks back a couple of weeks back when the, when the mass shooting happened in America and the comment said something along the lines you know maybe you shouldn't comment about subjects that you don't know anything about um, I totally agree and I always am very careful when I do sort of talk about it, is to say that I don't know anything about it, but I'm talking about it from exactly that perspective, from somebody who, how it looks on the outside, how it looks from overseas. That was the whole point of my perspective. I wasn't trying to give a, a knowledgeable, in, I wasn't trying to display a knowledgeable or in-depth understanding of the situation, but to give a, an idea of what it looks like to us, to people who don't understand it, to people who are overseas and who have just a superficial, um, view of what's going on. It's just to give that perspective. It's not supposed to be a knowledgeable perspective. And I said that in the video. So it's important to, if it, especially on the chat videos, it's important to listen them through because, you know, sometimes I'll be giving one side of, of an argument, then I'll do the next side, and then afterwards I might do a U turn. I'm, most of the time, these are unscripted and they're just me chatting. It's a chat. I'm not trying to give. Uh, definitive view of the matter it's just a chat you know it's, it's not supposed to be in uh, um, something that you can rely on it's, it's just that it's an informal chat that's what it is if that doesn't suit you then you know maybe don't watch those videos because they, they might irritate you <clears throat> we're just driving past London Zoo at the moment <clears throat> although I'd prefer to be going to London Zoo than going to hospital but uh, there we go, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's a very traditional time and during the Passover festival for families to go out on uh, day sort of trips. And London Zoo is a very popular one for sure. Although this weather is not gonna be great. Not very conducive to outdoor um, zoo visits, but uh, there you go. I saw a clip actually talking about the ground. I 
saw a clip this morning of uh, somebody, Princess Anne, at uh, some kind of function. And somebody in the audience asked her something about Buckingham Palace. How does she feel about owning such a, you know, having such a beautiful, magnificent private uh, dwelling? And she answered, well, it's actually not a private dwelling, it's owned by the state. And she doesn't live there, only the Queen lives there at the time when she had that. Now, obviously, um, she doesn't live there, but the, I don't know, I don't think Prince, I mean, officially, I think it's the resident of the monarch, so I, I suppose officially uh, King Charles lives there, but I don't know if he does in reality on a daily basis. But it did um, make me mindful of how Princess Anne kind of reminds me of the Queen in her, in how beautiful she is, and she keeps her composure, she keeps out of the limelight. Although the Queen couldn't keep out of the limelight because she was the Queen. Um, that big green building up here, the white green building is where I'm going, it's the New St. Charles. Sadly, I've been there far too many times recently. Um, but, you know, she gives, she's, you know, although she's had, has she had any, I'm trying to remember if she's had her dalliances. I think she has in the past, but even so, um, she's, uh, no, I'm, I'm mixing up with Princess Margaret. But she comes across as somebody with a very, very strong work ethic, very dedicated to the monarchy. Um, no problems, no hassle. You don't get the feeling that she's a spot brat and feels that the world owes her a living or owes her respect or anything like that. So she does remind me of the Queen. And I've got a, a lot of respect for her. It would be nice if the monarchy could go sideways. But um, I have to say that I've, I've been very pleasantly um, impressed with King Charles so far. There was a time, you know, when, when all of the bad press was going on between him and uh, Princess Diana. There was a lot of bad blood there and uh, it was bad. It was not good for, obviously terrible for the kids and we can see the results of that in their progeny. But. Um, to some extent anyway. Uh, but um, King Charles has done okay. He's done okay and I wish him well. I hope his uh, monarchy can become as firmly established as his mother's, although that's a tall order. But something like that anyway. At least be aspirational in that direction. And that it's not lived. I hope he does well and I wish him well. Right, I've got to find somewhere to park. I've enjoyed this chat. I haven't been on very much lately, but uh, you know, you've got to commit yourself to family when you need to. But I wish you all well, and uh, I'll be back all being well. Uh, I may have a, another video in between now. And then. The festival that I'm out of touch again will it starts tomorrow night and uh, finishes on Thursday night. So I'll be around Thursday night, Friday, and then Saturday again. It's the Sabbath. Uh, then I should be back all being well on Saturday night. But in any event, for now, I'm going to wish you all well. Sorry, phone call came in there. I'm just going to wish you well, and I'll catch you on the next one.